Hello, my wonderful, beautiful friends. Guys, welcome back to r slash Entitled People, where grown adults go absolutely bonkers when they don't get what they want. My friends, strap yourselves in, grab a drink, grab a snack, because you know it's going to be a wild one. Oh, and don't shake your heads too hard, guys. Remember to hit subscribe if you haven't, and we're going to dive into the stories, like, right now. So, I've worked at a local store that we'll call Small Tart. For those who don't know, pretty much on a daily basis, we have all sorts of entitled Karens and interesting characters come in. But this, oh boy oh boy, this one Karen wins the award by a mile. So this story starts off an hour into my shift. I was working the checkouts when this seemingly normal looking woman with her son rolls up to my checkout line with a cart full of groceries and she begins loading her stuff onto my belt. Now I could see a few boxes of open cookies and some opened Hot Wheel toys in the cart. Now, something like this does happen all the time at the store. Parents will often let their kids play with things to keep calm while they do shopping, and they end up paying for the opened items. This Karen, however, was a different story. So the Karen unloads everything onto my conveyor belt, and I scan everything. And she begins taking out the boxes of open cookies, Hot Wheels, toys, etc, etc, and putting them into the stack of baskets on the floor. Now, I was totally confused, and of course I asked her what she was doing. As I've said, I expected her to pay for these open goods. I said to her, um, excuse me, are you not going to pay for those items that you've opened? Karen says, no, no, I was just using them to keep my son busy while I shopped. I have no need for these items. And this is where a customer from behind comes in and says out loud, you have to pay for those. It looks like your child ate half a box of chocolate chip cookies. Now hearing this, the woman turns around and screams at him to mind his damn business. At this point, I come around and grab the basket full of open goodies that she wasn't planning on paying for. Upon further inspection, there were two packages of oatmeal cookies opened and partially eaten, one box of chocolate chip cookies half eaten, four single Hot Wheel toys with a package ripped off, a package of Twizzlers with one or two missing, and a stuffed animal that used to be white and now has chocolate fingerprints all over. Now, clearly anybody with half a brain would see that we can't restock these, and opened and eaten items should be paid for, which I then proceeded to explain to her. I say to her, I'm so sorry ma'am, but you have to pay for all of these items, which were around 20 bucks. Karen then proceeds to say, which baffles everybody around, no, I'm not paying for these, I don't even want these items, I'm not paying for something I don't want. I tell her, well, you opened it, so you have to pay for them ma'am, we can't restock these. Again, Karen says, no, no, I'm not paying for something I don't want. I told her, you should have thought about that before opening these items. You have to. This would be considered stealing. So Karen then proceeds to explain to me what stealing is, and she says, no, no, it's not. Stealing is when you take something out of the store. I left them here. I dare you to charge me with stealing. Just let me pay for the items you've scanned so I can leave the store. I tell her I can't. And at this point, she's clearly getting more angry that I'm not listening to her and scanning her items. Of course, my supervisor sees this and is now a part of the crap show. The woman's items have come out to a whopping $215 by now, and the supervisor's telling her that she needs to fork over the extra 20 bucks for the open cookies and toys, or she can't leave. And that was the worst thing to possibly say to this Karen at this point. Apparently, all Karen heard was, you can't leave, and a switch clicks in her brain. She then starts screaming that she can do whatever the heck she wants to do, and we can't keep her here like it's some sort of jail. The whole time, people behind us are shouting at her to just pay the damn 20 bucks, and someone even offered to pay the $20 for the opened items, just so they can move on with their lives. Karen hears this, and she says, good, that man has agreed to pay for my items. Now let me pay for mine so I can get out of here. My supervisor's relentless though, she tells her, no, no ma'am, I'm not letting him pay for items that your child consumed. It was at this point that Karen possibly makes the biggest mistake of her life. She screams, so if you won't let me leave, and you won't let this man pay for my items, you are kidnapping me, I feel threatened. Karen then pulls out a freaking taser from her purse, and she starts waving it at us. Karen then starts screaming about her rights as an American and that there's no way that an Asian, referring to my Filipino supervisor, can tell her what to do. My supervisor sees that this woman's unhinged and he radios for security and the cops to be called. Small Tart Security quickly comes running over to de-escalate the situation and end up asking her to come with them. 
Karen, of course, isn't going with security, and she takes her child and starts pushing for the doors, screaming that she was being assaulted by store employees, and that she'll call the police on us. She ends up leaving the premises, as I don't think we can legally detain her and hold her hostage. We ended up getting her license plates, and we gave that information to the police, and they went to check the store cameras, and they left. No idea what happened to her after that. Guys, I can't believe all of this happened because she refused to pay the $20 for the cookies and toys that kept her child busy while she shopped. That is some crazy, crazy entitlement. Give my child what they want so they can stay quiet while I shop. And I have no intention of paying for these goods. Like, if she was smarter, which she clearly wasn't because she pulled out a taser, she would have left all those eaten goodies in the clothing department for some poor Walmart employee to clean up. So, before some of my health issues, I worked at a few daycare centers as an early childcare assistant. Now, working in childcare means that you see your fair share of entitled parents, but this couple took the cake. It was the start of September, and our daycare had a few openings. I had been at this daycare for maybe a month and had gotten quite close to the group of 12 or so children, and I was excited to meet any new students that would be coming in. It was midweek, when we were told that a new family would be starting with us, and they would be bringing in two children. So enter the entitled family. From the moment they came through the door, it was evident that they were gonna be a bit of a pain, but you sometimes get difficult parents. The mom walks in with a can I speak to your manager haircut, and dad was trying to keep control of their two kids. Now, their first kid was a five-year-old girl. She was well-spoken and independent, but something about her seemed a bit off. The second child was four years old, and, well, not to be mean, but he was a little on the larger side. Now, I'm not talking a bit pudgy. This kid was the biggest and roundest child that I've ever laid my eyes on. Now, I want to note that I'm far from a spring chicken myself, and if his size were not relevant to the story, I wouldn't even share it. So, from the first few minutes of watching this family settle in, a few things became quite apparent. The kid number one was mostly ignored by her family, and kid number two had everything done for him. The parents only stayed for an hour to let the kids settle in, and then they headed to work. And I thought things would be normal, but oh no. Now, kid number two had apparently taken quite a liking to me, and was super clingy. Now, it is nice to be liked, but we do try to encourage children to play with each other more than the teachers, with one exception, who we'll call Sebastian. Now, Sebastian was the sweetest child that I've ever had the pleasure of teaching. The kid was almost four years old. He loved Robert Munch books and fire trucks, and he was almost entirely nonverbal and had autism. This meant sometimes he had some difficulties with interactions, but he was overall a very happy kid. He would stand on a stool all day, watching the firehouse and playing with his trucks. Usually I worked with Sebastian all day, since he's also taken a liking to me, and for many toddlers on the spectrum, having someone they're comfortable with really helps their ability to follow instructions and join in with the group activities. Now, Karen's second child did not like this one bit. He was constantly demanding the attention of not only me, but the other staff members too. And when he felt he didn't get it, he would cry. Now, I'm a very compassionate person, but also a no-nonsense teacher, and the crying grew more and more tiring, with the more obvious it was how spoiled he was. Now, not only did the second kid not know how to put on his Velcro shoes, open his lunchbox, or put on his coat at four years old, he would also demand that I help. And when I told him, I want to see you try it first on your own, and then I'll help, he would have a fit. He would cry and throw a tantrum. The second day they came to daycare, the dad pulls me aside to inform me that his kid number one said that a child had hit her. Of course I was surprised, but it is a daycare and these things can happen. I apologized and told the dad that we would keep an eye on her to make sure that nothing happened again. Though I did find it odd since she had spent most of the day playing by herself as she had stated that she likes her own space. We kept an eye on her all day and nothing happened. We were relieved. However, the second kid had begun hitting other children and tried to take toys from them, only to throw more tantrums when told to wait his turn and to not hit. This was especially worrying because of his size, and that most kids in our care were quite small for their age. Again, the next day the dad comes in, this time with Karen, claiming their daughter had been hit. I politely told them that their daughter had not interacted with anybody, except for one new girl, and we had been keeping a close eye on her all day, and we had not seen such an event. Karen then grabs her daughter's arm and says, Come, come, show me the boy who hit you. Her daughter points to Sebastian, and I tell the parents, No, Sebastian didn't even interact with her, I was with him all day. 
Karen then glares at me and says, That autistic boy should be in a special school with other kids like him. Now at this point, I'm getting annoyed, but I'm trying to remain polite and say, Sebastian does just fine in this class, and that's where his older brother came, so he's comfortable here. The dad then cuts in and says, That autistic boy traumatized our daughter. I don't want my kids going somewhere unsafe. I then told them that their daughter had not informed us of being hit by anybody, and that we hadn't seen anything, and it most certainly wasn't Sebastian who did it. And then I done goofed. I told them that their precious boy had actually hit several children. They both insisted that he was just stressed about the new environment, and then they gave him a pat on his back and said, Remember, gentle hands. And then they left. So over the next week and a half, there was a new issue every day. Anything from the daughter not getting to play with the doll she wanted, to the son not being lifted up to use the slide. No matter what though, every day, the parents would come in with the accusation that Sebastian had in some way been violent towards one or both of their children. I had been careful to tell my manager who worked downstairs in the other classroom everything that happened, when it was happening, and my coworkers backed me up. My manager was a small but tough older woman with very little filter, and she wasn't afraid of conflict. So one morning, she decided to stay in the classroom as the kids came in, to see firsthand what Karen and Dad were gonna say. So Dad comes in. He says his daughter said that Sebastian had threw a truck at her and tried pulling her hair. I once again said that I had been with Sebastian all day and that none of this had happened. However, once again, their son had been quite violent with the other kids. The dad then says to me that his son is only like that because he saw Sebastian hitting his sister and he's picking up bad behavior because he's never like this. Mom instantly starts on her rant about how she was going to call CPS to have this child removed from daycare and put into an autistic school. My manager was quick to step in, to tell her that she had no right to do that and that that isn't her child. Karen then kept going off about how the autistic boy was a danger to the other kids, and the autistic boy needs special care. My manager was getting clearly frustrated, and she said, You need to stop calling him the autistic boy. His name is Sebastian, and that's incredibly disrespectful. Karen then says, Well, he's autistic, isn't he? So I can call him whatever I want. And then my manager says something that I did not expect. My manager says, So would you be fine if everybody decided to call your son the fat boy instead of his name? And this set her off. They both grabbed their kids, screamed that they were going to have the daycare shut down, and they stormed out cussing, saying they're calling the police. A few days later, my manager comes to me and told me that they had left the daycare, but they wanted all their money back for the month, and they also wanted to sue us for trauma to their children, due to their time at the daycare. My manager had to go meet with them and the officials at the child care licensing board to prove that she didn't owe them anything. Luckily, I had also documented everything in a communication book that the staff shared, and myself and the other staff signed written statements basically saying their children were lying, violent, spoiled brats. The manager also brought the contract with her. The contract stated that they paid and they would be with us for a three-month trial period, and included a clause that stated that the center required a month's notice to leave. The parents ended up having to pay for the two months left in their contract, plus an additional month for cancelling with no notice. I only stayed at the daycare for another month, as I caught a very serious illness from a child and I was off for three months recovering. But the last I saw Sebastian, he was doing wonderfully and started to help read along with some of his favorite books. Those parents were something else, targeting Sebastian and using their kids to lie and make those wild accusations to try to get him removed from daycare is absolutely sickening. Like, good on OP's manager for standing up for Sebastian and giving that Karen a taste of her own medicine though. Okay, so this story happened a few days ago and I'm still trying to wrap my head around the fact that people think this is okay. So my cousin is 6 months pregnant, and I took her to the store to help her decide on some things, such as strollers, car seats, etc. And as we were walking around looking at the adjustable cribs, a small boy around 7 or 8 walked up to her. The kid says to her, Oh, are you having a baby? My cousin says, Yes I am, I'm having a boy. The kid then asked to touch her stomach, and my cousin isn't really big on being touched, especially by strangers. So she naturally says no, and the boy starts to fuss, saying, I want to touch the baby. Now, this is the part where I chime in and say, we understand, but she doesn't want to be touched by someone she doesn't know. And the kid keeps screaming that he wants to touch the baby. My cousin says, I'm so sorry, sweetie, but people do have their personal bubbles, and some people don't like having them popped. So after that, he storms off, and my cousin thought that that was the end. 
She thought he was old enough to understand and was taught about personal space. We then continued our shopping for a bit when the kid comes back with his mom. Oh goody, Karen says, You, why won't you let my son touch your baby? Now at this my cousin looks confused and rightfully so. The lady was just storming up to us and I got in front of her a little and my cousin says, I'm sorry? Karen asked, You won't let my son touch your baby. Why? Cousin says, because I don't know him, and it's rude to touch people that you don't know. Now the little kid's still screaming that he wants to touch him. I tell her, my cousin doesn't want to be touched by your son. Now Karen looks at me, scoffs, and rolls her eyes, and says, he doesn't mean any harm, he just wants to touch the baby. The kid then comes up to my cousin, and I stood directly in front of her now. My cousin was looking really shocked and stunned at this point, as this has never happened to her before. I say to them, no, you are not touching strangers when they ask you not to. Do you understand that? I look up at his mother who's getting more upset, and now the kid starts having a temper tantrum, and he throws himself on the ground, crying and screaming. Karen says, look what you've done. You've upset my son. I told her, no, you've upset him by promising him something that he can't have. The woman then says, what's the big deal? It's not even your child. And he's not going to be touching her, he's going to be touching the baby. Now, I was so taken aback by this statement that I had to blink a couple of times. Never in my life have I heard that one before. Luckily, the manager came over after she heard all the fuss, and the manager says, What's going on here? Is everything okay? Mom says, No, everything's not okay. She won't let my son feel her baby bump. None of this would have happened if you had just let him touch your baby. At this point, the kid's still rolling on the floor, having a temper tantrum. The manager says, Ma'am, can you please settle your child? Karen says, He will settle when he gets to touch the baby. The manager then says, Ma'am, you have no right to touch this woman, nor does your son. And no, he would not be touching the baby as it's not born yet. And even if it was, the mother has the right to say who can and who can't touch her child. My cousin at this point is shaking, and she starts to sit down, and I'm sure she's about to have a panic attack. I turn towards her and ask if she's gonna need her inhaler, as we're both asthmatic. She nods, and I reach into my purse and hand her mine, to which she starts taking. The Karen then screams, Don't you do drugs in front of my child! She then takes a step towards us, and I immediately stand up and say, Don't you dare come near her! She's having a panic attack because of you! At this, the Karen says, that's very unlikely. She just needed her fix. The manager then says, ma'am, I'm going to have to ask you and your child to leave now. The Karen argues that she hasn't finished her shopping yet. And the manager says, I don't care. You've been harassing these young women and I want you out of my store before I call the police and have you escorted out. The woman then scoffs and glares at me before picking up her kid, who's still having a fit, but not as loud now. She then left the store. I go back down to the floor to check on my cousin, and the manager asked if she's alright. My cousin just nods, and I help her up. She thanked the manager for helping us, and the manager gave us a 30% discount on our purchase for all the troubles, so it was a happy ending. Guys, I have no idea why people are so interested in touching baby bumps. Like, I really, really don't. Something similar to this happened to my cousin one time. We were at the store, and this old lady literally thought it was okay to start rubbing my cousin's belly out of nowhere. It was so weird because this woman did not speak a word of English and my cousin pulls away telling her no. While this woman kept smiling saying okay, okay and like kept reaching out to try to rub my cousin's belly. It was so freaking weird. Anyways guys, that brings us to another end of r slash entitled people. Guys, I hope you enjoyed the stories today and if you missed the other episode of r slash entitled people, check it out. A snobby Karen throws a rock at a police cruiser and craziness ensues. Check it out if you haven't, and myself and Steve-O will see you guys in the next one. We love you.